Hello, and welcome to the another educational video of instrumentation from Instranexus. In this video, we're diving deep into what is truly the foundation of all instrumentation deliverables, the instrument index. This presentation is a comprehensive guide on how to prepare this document, which is a critical deliverable in any large-scale engineering, procurement and construction, or EPC project DIA. What is an instrument index? So let's start with a clear definition. What is an instrument index? At its simplest, it's a comprehensive list of every single piece of instrumentation equipment required for your project. This includes critical details like the tag number, the process service, the instrument type, its physical location, and much more. In an EPC project, its role is to be the central repository for all instrumentation data. This is what allows for and facilitates coordination between all the different engineering disciplines. The ultimate purpose is to ensure you have accurate and consistent data across all project deliverables. That includes PNIDs, data sheets, wiring, and control system configurations. It's the critical document that provides a structured, standardized approach to managing all this data. Why it is important. Now, let's cover why it's so important. The instrument index is the critical document that links all your instrumentation data across the various project deliverables. Think of it as the master reference or the single source of truth. It serves as the foundation for creating almost all your other key documents. Your instrument data sheets are generated from it. Your wiring diagrams reference it. Your IO lists are derived from it. And your loop diagrams are drawn based on its contents. By using this single central document, you ensure consistency and traceability throughout the entire project. If a tag exists, it must be in the index. If it's in the index, all other documents can pull from it, which is what prevents costly errors and mismatches down the line. Ed, the instrument index isn't a document you create just once. It's a living document that evolves as the project matures. It begins during the feed stage or front-end engineering design. A preliminary version is prepared during this early project phase often with just the tag numbers and key service descriptions. As the project moves into detailed design, the index is continuously updated with more and more detailed information. This is when you add data from process, vendor lists, and electrical. Finally, once all designs are firm and all data is in, the instrument index is finalized and becomes part of the IFC, or Issued for Construction, package. At this point, it is the official approved document for procurement and construction teams to work from. Key inputs. You can't create an instrument index from thin air. Its accuracy depends entirely on the quality of its key inputs. First and foremost are the PNIDs. The piping and instrumentation diagrams provide the foundational information, including all the equipment, the instrument tag numbers, and the process data. Next, you need the process data sheets. These contain critical specifications like the service, operating pressures, temperatures, and process connection details. You'll also pull from vendor lists, which identify the approved manufacturers and models for the instruments. And finally, equipment lists, which provide information on the location and characteristics of the instruments, helping you build the index hierarchy. Key outputs. Once the instrument index is populated, it becomes the engine that generates all your other key outputs. From the index, you will create the instrument data sheets. These are the detailed technical specifications for each device, including its model, range, materials, and accessories. You'll generate your IO lists, which are comprehensive lists of all the input and output signals, including their type and connection details. The index is also the source for cable schedules, which detail cable sizes, types, and lengths and hookup drawings, showing the physical wiring and connection details. It can even be used to generate a SPIR, or Standardized Plant Instrumentation Report. The index's role as a central source makes all this possible. Instrument Index Hierarchy, Part 1. Now let's talk about the data itself, the Instrument Index Hierarchy. These are the columns in your database. First, the tag number. This is the unique identifier for each instrument, following a standard numbering convention. Next, the loop number. This identifies the control loop the instrument belongs to, linking transmitters, controllers, and indicators. You get this from the PNID or the control philosophy. Then the service description, 
which describes what it's monitoring, like feed gas pressure. You get this from the PNID or the line list. You'll also list the measured variable, like pressure, flow, or level, and the instrument type, such as transmitter, indicator, or control valve. Both of these are taken directly from the PNID. Instrument Index Hierarchy, Part 2. Continuing with the index hierarchy, we get into more specific engineering details. You must define the range or span. These are the minimum and maximum measurable limits of the instrument, which you get directly from the process datasheet. Alongside this, you list the engineering units, such as bar, degrees C, or percent, which you get from your process documentation. You'll also specify the required accuracy or class. This defines the instrument's precision and is usually found in the main project specification. Then come the physical details, the process connection type, like flanged or threaded, and the wetted parts material. This is critical for ensuring chemical compatibility with the process fluid and comes from the corrosion or material specification. Instrument index hierarchy, part three. The hierarchy continues by bridging the gap to the control and electrical systems. You must define the signal type. Is it a 420 milliamp signal? Is it using heart? Or is it a digital signal like foundation field bus? This information comes from the control system specification. You'll also list the loop type or IO type, like AI, AO, DI, or DO, which you will get from the IO list or DCS allocation sheet. Then comes the power supply requirement, such as 24 VDC, which you'll get from the electrical load list. Finally, you specify the physical location or area, like field, rack room, or analyzer shelter, and the mounting type, such as field mounted or panel mounted. Instrument index hierarchy, part four. And finally, the last part of the hierarchy covers the specific connection, procurement, and maintenance details. Here you'll track the cable number connected to the instrument, which you get from the cable schedule. You'll list the junction box and terminal number as a reference for the connection point, which comes from the JB termination drawing. As the project progresses, you'll add the manufacturer and model from the vendor datasheet. And for the full life cycle, you'll track the calibration range and date for maintenance tracking, and the status, is it in design, procurement, or installed? This, along with revision notes, comes from your project tracker. Here are a few more fields in the instrument index that generally produced, it varies company to company the details that is to be populated in the instrument index. typical column headings explained. So let's look at how this all comes together in a typical layout. This sample table shows some of those key columns we just discussed. For example, look at the first row. The tag no is PI101. The service is pressure indication. The PNID it's on is P101. The line no it's on is 101 pic 01. And its location is the reactor area. You can see how at a glance, this provides a complete summary for each and every tag. As the note at the bottom says, establishing a clear and consistent instrument tagging philosophy is absolutely crucial. This is what ensures you can trace and maintain the instrument index throughout the entire project lifecycle. Instrument tagging philosophy. A key part of the index and the project specification is the instrument tagging philosophy. You can't just make up tag numbers. The most common standard you'll use is the ISA 5.1 tagging convention. This standard provides clear guidelines for how to compose a tag, including its prefix for the measured variable, its suffix, and its functional identification. Within that standard, projects might adopt different unique numbering systems. For example, you might use a sequential system, a functional system, or a location-based numbering system. A special challenge is package instrument tags. These are instruments that come on vendor skids. You need a clear philosophy for how to structure their tags, often by adding a package prefix or suffix to distinguish them from your main field-mounted devices. Coordination with other disciplines. This slide perfectly illustrates a point we've been making. The instrument index lives or dies by its coordination with other disciplines. It is not an isolated document. 
As this chart shows, the required level of coordination is extremely high. You have a 90% coordination level with the process team to get all the service descriptions and process data correct. You have an 85% coordination level with the electrical team for power supplies, cable data, and load lists. You're at 80% with the mechanical team for connection types, line information, and wetted materials. And even a 70% level with the civil team for things like location and mounting. It truly is a central hub document. Revision control and document workflow. Because so many disciplines depend on it, the instrument index must have a rigid revision control and document workflow. It follows a clear path. You start by preparing the initial draft of the index. That draft then goes for internal review, where your engineering team checks it for accuracy. A crucial step is vendor review, where you coordinate with equipment vendors to confirm their data. Throughout this entire process, you must use revision tracking to document every single change. It then goes through a formal approval workflow to get sign-off from all relevant disciplines. Only after all these steps is it finalized and given the issue for construction status. Instrument Index Template Layout Let's talk about the template layout itself. In practice, the Instrument Index Template is almost always a standardized spreadsheet, either in Excel or a database program like SmartPlant. The goal of this template is to provide a comprehensive and structured format for organizing and documenting all this information. This template will have all the column headings we've discussed, such as tag number, service description, PNID reference, line number, and location. Using a standardized template allows instrumentation engineers to systematically capture and manage all the critical data for every single instrument in the project. Automation using SmartPlant Instrumentation, SPI. For large-scale projects, managing thousands of tags in a simple Excel file can be risky. That's where automation using SmartPlant Instrumentation, or SPI, comes in. SPI is a data-centric engineering software that is purpose-built for this task. This is what's known as data-centric indexing. It allows for the automated indexing and management of all your instrument data. It works by maintaining a centralized database. This database becomes the single source of truth for all instrumentation information on the project. The real power of this is that it enables seamless integration and data consistency across all those deliverables, like data sheets and I.O. lists, which can be automatically generated from the same data. Common mistakes and how to avoid them. Preparing an index of this scale is difficult, and there are several common mistakes to watch out for. First is data inconsistency. This is when your PNID says one thing and your index says another. You must ensure data is accurate and consistent across all documents. Second, duplicate tags. This is a critical error you can prevent by implementing a robust tag numbering system. Third, incomplete information. Make sure all required fields in your template are populated with accurate and complete information. Fourth, lack of coordination. As we saw, you must maintain close coordination with the process, electrical, and mechanical teams. Finally, delayed updates. You must have a clear revision control process to promptly update the index with any changes. Integration with DCS and IO database. The instrument index and the IO list are two halves of the same brain. A key task is the integration with the DCS and IO database. The instrument index contains all instruments and the I.O. list filters that list for only the instruments that connect to the control system. This integration involves linking the instrument tags from the index to the I.O. list. It involves mapping the I.O. signals for those tags. This allows you to achieve synchronizing configuration data between the two documents. When these two documents are in sync, you are streamlining commissioning because the path from field device to operator screen is clear and verifiable. Package vendor coordination. We mentioned packaged instruments earlier, but this topic deserves its own slide. Package vendor coordination is one of the most challenging parts of this job. First, you must coordinate with these vendors early, preferably during the feed stage, to understand their instrument tagging and data requirements. Next, you must align their instrument tags with your project standards, often by incorporating them into your overall index structure perhaps with a prefix. You must obtain all package instrument data sheets and integrate them into your main documentation set. 
you also have to coordinate all their I.O. and wiring requirements and get that information into your project's cable schedules and loop diagrams. Finally, you must have a process to manage changes when the vendor makes an update to their specifications. Quality checks and validation. Before any version of the index is issued, it must go through rigorous quality checks and validation. This starts with a final review checklist. This is a comprehensive QA QC review to ensure accuracy, completeness, and compliance with all project standards. This review includes data validation, cross-checking the tag numbers, service descriptions, and line numbers against the PNIDs, data sheets, and other reference documents. It includes consistency checks to verify that all nomenclature, units, and abbreviations are used consistently across the entire index. You'll do a completeness review to make sure no information is missing. And finally, interface coordination to confirm that the index properly integrates with the I.O. lists and cable schedules. Change management. A project is never static, so you must have a robust change management process. The workflow is straightforward. First, you must identify the changes, whether they come from vendors or from process revisions. This could be an update to a specification, a location, or a tag. Second, you immediately update the instrument index, incorporating those changes into the relevant fields. Third, you must coordinate with other disciplines, communicating the changes to the process, electrical, and mechanical teams to ensure everyone stays consistent. You must use revision tracking to document what changed and why. Finally, you issue the updated index after it goes through validation and approval, ensuring all stakeholders have the latest version. Real-world example. Let's visualize this with a real-world example. This slide perfectly illustrates the data flow. It all starts with the PNID. A new instrument tag is added. That tag is then entered into the instrument index, which serves as the central hub. In the index, it's populated with all its data, process, mechanical, electrical, and so on, integrating information from all those various sources. From that single entry in the index, a datasheet is generated. An I.O. list entry is created. A loop diagram is drawn. This flow, from PNID to central index to all other deliverables, is the core concept. The instrument index is what makes this powerful integration possible. So in conclusion, the instrument index is far more than just a list. It is the cornerstone of effective instrumentation engineering. Its primary role is to ensure data accuracy, standardization, and traceability throughout the entire project lifecycle. By following the best practices we've discussed for preparation, for coordination with all disciplines, and for rigorous change management, I instrumentation engineers can deliver reliable and efficient instrumentation deliverables. This, in turn, supports the overall success of the entire project. Thank you for watching this guide on the Instrument Index. Thank you for watching another video with us. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content on instrumentation and control engineering. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks again for watching.